Hello, my name is Dr. Jose Luis Ruiz, and I'm the director of the Los Angeles Institute of Clinical Dentistry. And one of the most asked questions that I get on the lecturing circuit is, how do I make sure that my onlays don't fall off? Uh, this has to do with proper, you know, isolation, you know, minimizing contamination, bleeding especially. Uh, also questions like, how do I clean the cement efficiently? Uh, and, and a number of other, you know, very important questions that, that I would like to share with you today. In fact, today I would like to share with you three very good clinical tricks that I've learned over many, many thousands of repetitions of only cementations. So uh, let's start with talking about how do we manage bleeding because Cementing an onlay when the, the gums are bleeding is extremely difficult. We all know this. And a common problem during onlay cementation is when the gums bleed at the time of the cementation. This can be a tremendous problem that is difficult to control. Uh, on the screen is an example of a dentist who had an onlay cemented three times and the three times fell off and you can see why. Controlling the bleeding during cementation was impossible. On the screen now you see the five principles of super gingival dentistry. And this is really the key to success. I would like to, I, we, today we won't be able to go into too much detail, but it is important that during the preparation we preserve super gingival margins. And if for any reason we, we, uh, we have to go sub gingival, then we need to manage it possibly with enamel preservation, possibly with uh, margin elevation. There are, there, there are multiple techniques. It, the, margin, the location of the margin is not left to luck. We dentists have the power to control where the margins end. So that said, if we have a bleeding papilla, and that happens, and on the screen now you see a situation where, where I'm trying to cement a non-lay and there is some bleeding coming from the gum. And I can tell you that sometimes it's very difficult to control and I mean I've used all the tricks and I've used uh, anesthesia with epinephrine and the laser and, and um, you know hemostatic solutions and that'll give you control for a minute or two but then the worst thing that can happen is on the last second where you're just ready to seat the restoration some bleeding comes out. A really nice trick that I've been using for many years now is compression, so simple compress the gum, compress the papilla. Now you see on the screen my finger compressing the papilla, you see some blanching happening and the beauty of that is once you compress the papilla it, it just stops bleeding and, and it will stop bleeding as long as you're compressing or pressing on the papilla. That will allow you to then resume your bonding procedure. You know as long as you're pressing that papilla you have you have control of the bleeding. So that's one trick that I think I will suggest that you try. Now I'm share, and I want to share with you the, the actual cementation procedure. This is a very important trick that I would encourage you to you also utilize. When you seat your, your onlay, and as you see me in the screen, seating the onlay, cleaning the excess of the cement, it is very important that we're careful not to not to dislodge the onlay during this process because we can actually suck air and leave a, leave a margin empty. So I seep the restoration until it, until it bottoms out and then I will apply pressure. This is actually based on very solid research and you see it on the screen. Apply, these are, this are Emacs onlay, so you can apply a lot of pressure and while you're applying pressure and helping extrude all the excess cement, maybe a little bead or it around the margins, you cure the onlay. You only do a partial cure. You don't want to over cure the onlay because the next thing that we're going to do is clean the cement. But this research shows that with, with pressure we actually enhance the cementation process. The final trick that I want to share with you is the, the utilizing the number 12 blade to remove the cement using a two-handed technique. Because as you know in the, in the mouth we, we have a number 12 blade and if we, if we use it with one hand it could be a little dangerous. If it slips it can be, da it can be dangerous. Uh, but if you see me on the screen using two hands. One hand is the fulcrum, the second hand 
is applying the force. And if you do it like that, you have absolute control. There's nothing scary about it, and then it really works very well. Uh, a number 12 blade does a much better job than a scaler because a scaler takes chunks out of the margins, and ultimately uh, you end up with slightly open margins. A uh, number 12 blade is just gonna plane or trim the cement, and, uh, and it works incredibly well. Well, uh, these are just three simple tricks that, that I hope will be helpful to you during your only cementation. Of course, this could be used use also on veneer cementations. At the Los Angeles Institute, we teach courses. They are very practical, and they're really geared to practicing clinicians. You, you may visit our website to get more information about these courses. Of course, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing these three clinical tricks with you, and look forward to the next one. Have a great day.